Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Coleman and I have our one of our favorite people in the entire universe, not just this world, but intergalactically, Manny Pacheco. Whoa. Our movie maven, Manny, uh, the movie maven. Hey, Manny, I've got a little, um, a, a, not a quiz, it's, it's a little um, a tease for you. Mm -hmm. We were watching a movie the other night, and uh, it, one of my favorite movies, but it was not a big movie, but in the middle of it is a song that made me realize this guy has written songs, pop songs, for every medium you can imagine, and movies. They're all over the movies, but I don't think he mm. ever wrote a film score per se. And here's here's the scene. The scene is from my best friend's wedding, mm. and they're they're at a, a dinner in a restaurant, and they have lobster claws, and somebody starts the Burt. Back rock song, say a little prayer for me. Da 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 da. And it, you know that's the the quintessential back rock uh, hip hop kind of rhythm. Yeah. But it's the most charming scene in the whole movie, and it's wonderful. And he he's got movie, he's got songs in every movie ever made, I think. But he never really composed a score. For well, I would, I would hate, I would hate to differ with you. I, I, he did write a couple of scores. One for the uh, James Bond spoof, Casino Royale, the original Casino Royale with uh, David Niven and Peter Sellers and uh, and uh, uh, Woody Allen. Really. And he actually won an Oscar for a score, actually, uh, for for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. No, he wrote the score for that. Oh, he wrote the complete score for for the for uh, Butch Cassidy and the yeah. Sundance. Yeah, I mean that, I, the, the big song was what, Raindrops, right? Raindrops. Raindrops. Sure. Well, that yeah. That's why I say all I think of is his songs. The old the like whole Raindrops. score the whole score was his. Wow. Yeah. I, well, I stand corrected. Uh, anyway, he's a great composer. Well, and certainly he's... had a, a you know dominated the pops pop charts for years. Well, you know, he really is the fabric of music from the 1960s to about the 1990s. He there, he had he was so prolific in his songwriting, along with his collaborator uh, Hal David. Yeah. I, they, you're right. They they wrote tons of music and they appeared in lots of movies. They did score a few movies, and and Burt Bacharach actually appeared in a couple of movies, which I'll get into in a little bit. But he he really is the sound. And let me just go so far as to say. He was so beloved that Richard Nixon's conception of the silent majority, the suburban Republicans of the 1960s, yeah. big fans of Burt Bacharach, the counterculturalists, the, the people who were out there uh, fighting against the Vietnam War, big fans of Burt Bacharach. He was just beloved by everyone. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Now, he, he began his career actually writing music and uh, working and playing piano, like Marvin Hamlish would do, like he did with uh, with Groucho in the 70s. But he would do this in the 50s with, with folks like Vic Damone. And the person who probably, and you would not know this, classic forgotten Hollywood here, the, the person who actually really jump-started his career, Marlena Dietrich, of all. Oh, no, really? <laughs> How did that happen? Well, he he was looking for a gig, and you know she started doing the nightclub circuit in the 1950s, and she needed somebody to uh, accompany him, uh, her, and, and and he used his piano, and he would uh, he would travel with her. Wow. Yeah, Marlena Dietrich, Vic Damone. I mean, these were the ones that really started. Now, his film career started in a weird way. He was asked asked to to write the theme for a very iconic 1950s film. And this is how he actually got together with Hal David. And it, the next time you watch The Blob, the theme from The Blob is his <laughs> first uh, movie score and his first hit record. Really? <laughs> Can you uh, give us a couple of bars? I don't remember that. You know, beware <laughs> of The Blob. It, cre it creeps, it leaps, it glides, it slides across the floor. Oh, oh. <laughs> the blob. <laughs> that is great trivia. Wow, yes. I never would have known that. Yeah, these are that's that was his 1950s. I mean, little suggested what the next decade was going to be in store for sure. him. I mean, that that didn't tell you anything. 
But, yeah. you know, he, he, he started working with uh, Hal David and they were really uh, uh, prodigious in, in their writing and they just found their perfect muse in Dionne Warwick. Yep, mm -hmm. sure. And that, and that just sent them into the stratosphere. You know, anyone who had a heart, don't make me over. And then from that point on, hit after hit after yeah. hit after hit after hit. Oh, and, yeah. and, and the beat goes on, as they say. Well, that's this is very revelatory because I never um, pictured uh, him as a film guy, film music guy. I always pictured him as a guy who had a lot of pop songs and they were so popular they would be used in movies. You know, they were used in in every fashion you can think of. Yeah, well, The Look of Love is one great example, the Dusty Springfield version. Of course, Sergio right. Mendes did a version too, right. that hit record, but Dusty Springfield's version appeared in that James Bond spoof, uh, Casino Royale. So, yeah, I, I mean, but he did, I mean, he wrote his songs. Don't get me, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, he had records that didn't appear in movies that were just hits. This Guy's in Love With You that was sung by, of all people, Herb Albert. And, yes. and that was a hit record, never, I don't believe, appeared in a movie. I mean, he had, he he worked in and out of movies his entire career. And of course, when he teamed later with Carol Bayer Sager, his uh, wife, I, I believe his second or third wife. I think his uh, third wife, yeah. Yeah, they were they were also writing music that ended up appearing in, in, uh, in movies as well in the 1970s. But I mean, if you think of the soundtrack, the easy listening soundtrack of the 60s and 70s. Oh, yeah. I mean, you think of, well, who do you think? You think of uh, Henry Mancini. Right. Henry Mancini had that same very popular sound, maybe John Barry, yeah. but but definitively Burt Bacharach. You know, it's kind of interesting. I've always, uh, when, uh, I, when I knew that uh, we were going to talk about Bacharach a little bit, the first thing that came to mind, even though there's a, a lot different, was Barry Manilow, except Barry Manilow, actually had a different sort in commercials, I guess, more than anything else, writing jingles. And, yeah. uh, and then he became a performer, I think, somewhat reluctantly. Uh, and Bert Backrack also, I think, somewhat reluctantly became a performer in his own right. Uh, he was well, never... Yeah, he didn't really sing. I mean, he could sing. I I've heard him sing. I've heard mm -hmm. him sing a lot. But, um, you know, he he didn't want to sing. I mean, he was just much more comfortable writing music and particularly writing music for Dionne Warwick. I mean, boy. Yeah. I mean, just about every hit. He, he did some Broadway. Promises, Promises was his as oh, well. Oh, is it? Really? I didn't know that. And of course, uh, Dionne Warwick had a hit with that as well. You know, it, it, Manny, all you have to do, you're absolutely right. All you have to do is sing the key line from any song and you'll know it's a Bach rock. Promises, 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 promises. Yep, that's yep. that's that rhythm, that back rock rhythm. Yeah, that's yep. identifies every song he's ever done. Wrote music for lovers and other strangers. Mm -hmm. Yep, love. Look at the two of us, lovers. You know, yeah. and of course, you know the Karen Carpenter song, and that was that was back rock. I mean, really, he he was so busy, and he made it look easy. I mean, yes. he really just made it look easy. He was a very likable, yeah. um, almost shy, and very unassuming. I, I, I imagine he worked 12-hour days, but he enjoyed writing music so much. And it, and it was so clear that he was in his really happy spot uh, composing. I mean, I, I, I think the hit records were just the, uh, the, 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 the gravy on the, on, the, on, the, on the meat, but he really enjoyed writing. And with Hal David, boy. And... Yeah. Michael Feinstein, the noted uh, crooner, historian, uh, he was able to honor uh, Backrack and David at the White House for their for their fine work and, and and basically declared them as part of the Great American Songbook. And it's hard to argue with that. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that Backrack is the Gershwin of his day, but his music fit in it fits in really nicely with the great standards of all time. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I do have some personal stories that I can share with you. Yeah, Morning. I was about, to, I was about to ask you, uh, uh, and it doesn't have to be like dirty dirt, but maybe a little bit of loam of some sort. Well, one of them is a little um, sensitive, shall we say, but I'll, I'll give you the first one. When I was a kid and I was in junior high, this is before I grew. I don't know, for folks that know me, I'm six foot four and a half, but this was like I was, I was five foot four and I was a kid. I was in junior high 
And uh, I wanted to audition to be in, a, in the school play. And, and the play they were doing was Oliver. And uh, I was up against, of all people, um, D uh, Dick Van Patten's kid, uh, Vince Van Patten, who to this day remains a friend. And he's a, he's a good guy. But we were up for the same part. And I'm thinking, well, Vince has got the acting chops and he's blonde. He's going he's gonna to get the, the, the gig. But I auditioned. They said, well, what song would you like to sing? to audition with. And of all things, I picked a Bacharach number. I didn't pick a, I didn't pick a show tune. I didn't pick anything from Oliver. I picked Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. And that's what I sang to get the part. And I got the part. <laughs> I actually got the part. <laughs> Thank you, Bert Bacharach. Thank yes, you, so how about, Okay, now how about that second one you were gonna tell us about? Oh, you're, you just want the saucy one. That's yes. it. See, Art's only in it for the sauce. Look yeah, at him. Look you at got him. it. <laughs> well, I went to a big event. You know, I worked at Carolee for many years, and, and I get invited to things. And I went to an event that honored uh, Stevie Wonder. So on stage was uh, Dionne Warwick. Um, Elton John was there, among others. And they were there to celebrate the career of, of Stevie Wonder. Well, in the audience, apparently, was Burt Bacharach. So... Uh, at one given moment, I decided I needed to go to the gents' room, and I did. And I uh, was standing there, as you do when you're in the gents' room, and standing next to me was, of all people, Burt Bacharach. And I was like, wow, I'm right next to Burt Bacharach doing my business. I can't even believe this. So I didn't say anything. I, I tried to be, you know, cool. Because, uh, I mean, it's kind of not the time you talk with somebody. And I went back to my seat. Well, about an hour and a half later, as they're concluding, I decided I need to go back to the gents' room. So I did, and who's standing next to me? Burt Bacharach. He turns to me and he says, you know, I think we're on the same cycle. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I can't believe that you didn't sing uh, a little ditty for him, the thing that, that, <laughs> that, that opened your career. You missed yeah. the opportunity of a lifetime. Well, you know, and he's not the only person I've stood next to in the gents' room. I've, I've also had conversations of all people with Vin Scully wow. <laughs> and Cuba Gooding, Cuba Gooding Jr. So, but but the fact that I actually that he actually initiated a conversation and that he remembered me, yeah. I thought was was really was really cool. And then he said something really funny. I I, I was and you know what? It's PG rated. It's not X. You know, I can actually right. tell the story. Yeah. So th that's my Burt Bacharach memory. Uh, I met him only well twice in the same night. <laughs> well, let's just um, say in that in this in this in, uh, discussion we're having, that is a that really flows with this conversation. <laughs> So, you know, I I think that he was writing music up until the day he died. I mean, he got to, God bless him, he got to live 90 years. Mm. Uh, and, and, boy, talk about the accolades that poured out of just about every part of Hollywood. Yeah. Talk about a, a composer that was beloved. It was very obvious that lots of folks have been influenced by the music yeah. Of, of Burt Bacharach. And all you need to know is the next time you watch an Austin Powers movie, you will find that one of the on-screen appearances in, in two of his movies is none other than Burt Bacharach and he's singing. I mean, because Austin Powers is that tribute of the, of, to the, to the sure. swing in 60s. Sure. And in the mind of Mike Myers, who, is, who, is, who isn't cooler than, than Burt Bacharach? Right. So he got him to appear in his movies, you know, yeah. And, and and that's all you need to know. I mean, that's it right there. Groovy, baby. Groovy. Backrack's <laughs> music defined more than one generation. So Absolutely. So th yeah. this has been a fun discussion. I'm happy to share my private memories of, of Bert. And you know, I I I was one of I was one of his fans. Really. You know, I would say I would say though that you have introduced us to the Manny Pacheco stand up act. So <laughs> <laughs> we thank we thank you for sharing that. All of uh, your stands up. A whole with, new perspective right. on Burt Rock Rack. Well, I guarantee you, nobody else has that story. That's, That's true. Right. <laughs> All right, Manny, thanks so much. Been my pleasure. This has been fun, 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 fun. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube.
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.